So everyone, uh, this is hybrid accounts and we're proceeding with correlation. Today, let's take a look at properties of correlation. Okay, the first one is that the correlation coefficient always lies between negative one and positive one, right? When speaking of correlation coefficient, simply speaking, uh, is that uh, the variables could have a 100% relationship either in the same direction, which is 100%, which means positive one, or 100% but opposite direction, which means negative one. So correlation coefficient should range between negative one and positive one. So always when I'm given the question, you should be able to say on whether uh, the correlation coefficients, the correlation coefficient given are right or not. Okay, we'll see that, no problem. Or maybe, for example, you can go and take a look here uh, and find out how what correlation coefficients are right or not. Let me ask you a question. Let me do something like this here. Okay, now you can tell me. Tell me on whether uh, the following correlation coefficients are right. Is zero point, as I told you, it should range from negative one uh, less than O equal to R, which should also be less than O equal to positive one, right? Okay, we start with number one, 0 0.8. Is 0 0.8 also 0 0.8? Is it right or not? This one is right because it ranges between uh, negative one and positive one. And also you have to note one thing, right? Note that correlation coefficient could be explained in the form of decimals. Decimals. It could be explained as a fraction, but also it could be explained as a percentage. So don't be swayed by by how it is shown, right? So this one is fine. All right, uh, number two, when we're given, let's say uh, three over five, this two, you know, three over five means 0 0.6. So it is it also range between negative one and positive one. So it's also right, right? But also let's say you are provided with uh, 120%. This one is not right because 120 means 1.2. 1 1.2 1 exceeds one, right? So uh, it's not right. And let's say maybe you have something like uh, negative, uh, negative 0 0.7. Negative 0 0.7 is in the, within this range, negative one to positive one. And so this one is right. So you have to know uh, what is right and what is not right. Let's say number five, uh, we have something like, uh, like uh, how much? Let's say negative two. Negative two, this one is not right because uh, Correlation being negative is no issue, but you have number two here, which has a higher magnitude than one. And so it's not right. So those are examples. And now you can proceed with the other properties. Let's go to property number two now. Correlation coefficient is independent of the change of origin and the scale. Simply speaking, correlation coefficient, when we change the origin of a variable or the scale, uh, correlation coefficient won't be affected. What do I mean by this? Simply speaking, in case you have two variables, x and y, and let's say you change them to variables u and v to such an extent that you had, you had x, but now you deduct you can deduct any value from that value of x. If you do that, and maybe you deduct any value from that value of y, let's say I've deducted b from the value of y, this is what we, we, we call the change of origin. But also, you can also divide by any figure or multiply by any figure, this one h, and here divided by any any variable say scale this one will say change of scale so whenever you do something like this uh there would be no difference at all right meaning that for example uh let me show something like this i could show something like this here let's say you have variable x and here we have variable y and let's say maybe i've decided uh, to determine new variable which is u and this u let's say should be equal to i take my x and then I subtract, let's say 100, and then I divide by, for example, I divide by 10. This one would be very fine. Now let's say that uh, I had the value of X is 20, and then I had the value of Y is uh, 120. And then uh, let's say X was also 30, and y, y was 140. And at last, let's say when X was 40, Y was uh, 200, for example. Now, uh, in case maybe you find out that, oh, or maybe let, let me say that this is you, let me call it V, and here let me call this Y. I've now, I'm now changing Y. I'm saying that, oh, this Y figure is too huge, so I need to change it. I need to make it smaller. 
so that I can I can determine my correlation in a simple way. So I can say that I take my y and substitute here. So if you take your 120, 120 minus 100 equals to 20. 20 divided by 10, you have to 140 minus 100 equals to 40 divided by 10, you have 4. And 200 minus 2 minus 100 here equals 100 over 10. We have 10, something like that. You see that? So instead of using x and y to get the correlation coefficient, you can use x and the v to, use to get the correlation coefficient. And as you can see, these figures are much are much smaller. Uh, you can handle them in a much easier way, right? Yes, yeah, so you have not something like that. All right, uh, the other property here is say that correlation coefficient is a pure number independent of units of measurement. That's what we mean by a pure number. Correlation coefficient has no units. You cannot say that correlation coefficient equals to two centimeters or 0 0.1 centimeters. It has no units or 0 0.20 kilograms. It's just a degree of association, right? So beware. All right, and then another property here, we say that independent variables are uncorrelated but the opposite is not true. Independent variables, what, what is this? I think there is some, there's a problem here. There is kind of a problem. I think there is a typing error, right? There's a typing error. I, yes, maybe, okay, let's go, let's start with this. If R equals to zero, the variables are uncorrelated. I think we saw this already in the above uh, video, right? If R is zero, mean, it means that there is no correlation, so not nothing. But also you are saying here that independent variables are uncorrelated, but the opposite is not true. What does this mean? I think there is a, you can just ignore this face, right? Just ignore this. Yes. Okay, let's go to the other point here. We say that here that uh, the correlation coefficient is the geometric mean of two regression coefficients. Now, when you study regression, you will find out that you have two lines with regression coefficients, things called regression coefficients. If you have never seen something or had something called uh, geometric mean, I, I, I think I could try to show you here, right? Simply speaking, when you need to know the geometric mean, correlation coefficient simply, we have been told that it is a geometric mean of regression coefficients. Now, to determine the regression coefficient, you will be given them an exam. So you can just say maybe one regression coefficient, let's call it B1, and the other, that is, let's call it B2. And then you take the square root, you take the root of the number. So there are only two, so you can just take the square root, right? Square root. So by square root, I think you can just do it this way. You can just uh, put them in the brackets, and then you can raise them to the power of 0 0.5, right? Something like that. And then you can get the correlation coefficient. So it really depends on the information I've been provided within an exam. All right, but if here we say that correlation coefficient of two variables, x and y, is symmetric, what does this mean? You know, uh, when you have two variables, you can say that each variable may depend on the other. Let's say when we change x, y would change, and when we change y, x would change. Now, whenever you are just trying to determine the correlation coefficient. For example, if you are told R x, y, it means that correlation coefficient between x and y when x depends on y. y, R y, x, uh, the correlation coefficient between the variable, but y depends on x here. It's different to regression coefficient, right? For regression coefficients, if you say B, meaning regression coefficient, x on y usually is not equal not equal to correlation coefficient on y depends on x. But for correlation coefficient, they are usually the same thing, right? This one, may, it could be very circumstantial that you find them, them, them equal, but normally they are not equal. So uh, that's what you need to know here. When determining the, the correlation coefficient, uh, it wouldn't matter which variable is di dictating the changes in the other. And then we're told here that the square of R gives something called coefficient of determination. You will see later what coefficient of determination is, so no worries about that at all. All right, let me go and try to explain this thing which was confused, which was confused here, right? What I meant here is, you know, when you have two regression lines, we'll see this later too, but actually, when, when R equals to zero, if correlation coefficient equals to zero, it yeah. means that the regression lines are perpendicular to each other. You know, when the lines are perpendicular to each other, it is an evidence that there is no relate, there is totally no relationship. One line is this way and the other is this way. That means these lines are not related at all. 
But actually, uh, when r equals to positive 1 or negative 1, it means that these lines coincide with each other. They actually coincide with each other. So this is what uh, will come and learn later, right? Okay, so uh, this is what you at least have to understand about this. And next in line would be the methods used to compute the correlation coefficient. We'll have two methods, which is product moments or called Carpeson's method, following the one who actually initiated it. And then you have the rank of chairman's method, something like that. So you have to get stay tuned uh, for all this, right? Okay. Until next time.